the Muslims of the years have declined in the areas of science, technology, and other fields. Now, why have we declined recently, and why are the Muslim nations bowing to Western countries for technological help and other help? Well, that's a good question, that why have the Muslims declined in terms of science and technology? Why do we look up to the Western world, etc.? If you read history, from the 8th to the 12th centuries, the Europeans, they called it as the Dark Ages. Dark for whom? Dark for the Europeans. The amount of advances the Muslim Arabs made is phenomenal. It was the golden age. And if you read history, as I told you earlier, the person who drew the first world map was Ali Drusi, 1154. In mathematics, the Indians had known about the zero. The Arabs came, they got that and invented, they put the decimal point. So therefore, reason what we call the numerals, it's an Arabic numerals. That one, two, three, four, the right word for that is Arabic numerals. One, two, three, four. It is by the Arabs. In trigonometry, if you know, the person who was an expert, Al-Biruni, he was an expert. The Pythagoras theorem, the square of the opposite side is equal to the sum of the other two sides of the triangle. It was al -Tusi. So when we read history, most in one top of the world, the father of chemistry, who is he? You know, we read in the book, Geber, Geber. It is Jabir. Jabir ibn Hayyan. They want to westernize the name. Geber, Geber. Sounds like a westerner. It is Jabir ibn Hayyan. Geber. We read in school, the person who discovered the blood circulation, William Harvey. And 400 years before William Harvey, it was Ibn Nafis. Ibn Nafis was the first person who described the blood circulation. But in the book, we read about William Harvey. No one knows about Ibn Nafis. In medicine, Razi, Muhammad, Shakir, they were experts in chemistry, in medicine, in smallpox. We know the Aristotle of the East. Aristotle of the East. Avicenna, Avicenna. Ali ibn Sina. In Avicenna, Avicenna. <laughs> so with time, we think it's a Westerner. Avicenna. It is Ali ibn Sina. I can give hundreds of names of Muslim scientists, but I agree with you. I agree with you. Now, the Muslims have declined. We Muslims on top of the world. The reasons today the Muslims have declined and we're on the receiving end is because that time we were close to our religion. Now Muslims have gone away from our religion, away from Quran and Sahih Hadith. The Westerners have advanced because they too have gone away from the religion. We have declined because we have gone away from our religion. The Westerners have advanced because they too have gone away from their religion. Their religion is not haq. Our religion is up. The reason we have gone away from Quran and Sunnah, that is the reason we are in this situation. If we go back to Quran and the Sahih Hadith and implement the guidance given by Allah and His Rasul, inshallah, once again we will be on top of the world. I hope that answers the question. A uh, question from the sisters that as Muslims, should we be living in a non Muslim country? Sister has a question. As Muslims, should we be living in the non-Muslim country, depending what is the intention and what is the activity? If you're born there, then fine, there's no problem. If you live, live as a Muslim. If you live as a Muslim in a non-Muslim country, no problem. But if you live as a non-Muslim, non-Muslim country, then there's a problem. So if you live as a Muslim and implement on the Quran and the Sharia, there's no problem at all. You can live, there's no problem. If you're born there, then you have to live. Regarding migrating, there are different views of scholars. Some scholars say yes, some scholars say no. If you migrate, it can only be for knowledge, it can be for dawa, etc. Not for money, etc. There's a views. But if you have been born here, fine. But see to it that you live like a Muslim. Muslim means a person who submits will to Almighty God. Then there's no problem. Hope that answers the question.